Hi everyone, I'm Priscilla and I'm an MS3 at UAB and a member of the survey report team for the ISA. I'm here today with Dr. Peterson to talk about the Medical Student Performance Evaluations, uh, MSPE. Hi, Dr. Peterson. Hi, Priscilla. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Uh, what is uh, UAB's proactive response and how are we shifting MSPEs to match the changing landscape? Okay, that's a great question. As, as we all know, there's been some significant changes in medical education over the past year and a half. Um, the most significant one being the transition of step one from a three digit score to pass fail. Um, because of that, the MSPE, Medical Student Performance Evaluation, commonly called the Dean's Letter, is something that's going to be relatively more important. Um, you know, it's something that's very valuable to program directors because it is essentially one-stop shopping for all the information you need to know about a student. It's a document that contains, um, you know, whatever board scores are available, uh, clinical grades are listed, um, mm -hmm. clinical comments, which program directors find very valuable um, about every student, but it's also a place where each school can talk about the unique curricular components that um, you know, they're able to have that really prepare their students well for the future. So for example, with step two CS going away, um, there's no national accepted exam um, where program directors can say, okay, you pass this exam, I know for sure you are going to be well prepared clinically. Um, so our school has adopted other metrics um, like our EPA system and in the future we're also developing an OSCE system where third year students are going to have structured objective exams throughout the year. In our Dean's letter we're going to have a chance to talk about those programs so residency directors can say all right if it's a UAB student I know that they have passed these very challenging very objective metrics and they're going to be great clinically from day one. Um, now, one of the other things that are really important from a Dean's Letter perspective, it's a chance for us to really market all of our students' unique strengths and what they're gonna to bring to residency programs. So there are different places where we can talk about all the amazing accomplishments that our students have made with research, um, with service learning, with involvement in extracurriculars and interest groups related to the specialties that they're pursuing. Um, so it is a very robust document. It's one that's incredibly valuable um, for our students and for our residency directors and is really just gonna be more valuable in the future. Um, so we certainly have spent a lot of time trying to refine it to give those program directors exactly the information that they need. That's great. Um, another question, since COVID last year, the pandemic, uh, residency interviews moved to this virtual um, mode. And uh, do you believe this is something that in the future is here to stay? And how does that affect either help or hurt uh, applicants? Okay. Yes, that, that is correct. Um, Zoom is taking over the world. Um, <laughs> so everything has gone virtual. Last year, it was a necessity um, because of the pandemic and the lack of, you know, a vaccine and, you know, further treatment options for COVID. This year, they elected to keep it because of the ongoing pandemic. But also one thing that was very interesting, um, the explanation for why the Coalition for Physician Accountability elected to keep it this year, um, it was more for equity of access. I um, certainly know that not every med student has limitless dollars um, to <laughs> travel around the country. Um, so they, they felt very strongly um, that it was more in the student's favor to not have to mm -hmm. spend all that time and money traveling to interviews. Um, so it is nice, it's cheaper for us students and they don't have to spend quite as much time away from clinical rotations to interview, um, but no solution is perfect. There's certainly some downsides as well. Um, there's a recent survey put out by the NRMP which showed that both applicants, um, you know, they had a hard time really assessing their programs quite as well because they weren't able to physically go there, um, weren't able to see the facilities um, in person. And a lot of programs felt that they did get a few more applications than they were used to. And it was a little bit challenging to accurately assess the, the you know, students that they were interviewing. Um, so it's certainly gonna be here this next year. Um, it was just announced today, actually, um, that there's a, a blanket recommendation across all residencies to go that same route um, in the 21-22 cycle. Um, but there's also a recommendation that further research be done into the topic. My anticipation is that um, a likely outcome will be that after all the research is, is gathered, um, many programs and specialties will elect to keep a virtual option going forward. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're also gonna see something that we're seeing um, this cycle as well a lot of programs and students are planning um, to have some informal or formal second look programs where 
if a student has a program that's going to be in their top three to five, um, maybe they find a way to go to that city physically and take a look at their facilities and maybe even talk with some folks attached to that program. So I, I anticipate that's where we're going to land long term. Um, but as one thing we've learned over the past year and a half, um, <laughs> got to be flexible because you never know what's going to happen. Definitely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me about this, Dr. Peterson. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me.